So we are kicking our ultra marathon recon series off with a look at Chapman's Peak. This is arguably the uh, one of the most beautiful sections of road anywhere in the world. It's the iconic climb on the two oceans, and it's the reason that this is the uh, the most beautiful marathon in the world. But I guess if you're running the race, you'd be forgiven for not fully appreciating that beauty because you start this climb just after the 29k mark. And it takes you up over the next four or so kilometers to 33.7. And then you descend down for 4.5k into Hart Bay. And the problem is that neither the climb or the descent is particularly steep. Uh, breathtaking scenery. And it comes early enough that you'll still feel fresh. And so there's a tendency to push a little bit too hard, especially on the descent. The problem with that is that this isn't the last climb of your race. You still have to get down into Hart Bay and then tackle arguably a tougher climb because of its steepness in Constantia neck. So it's really, really important that you manage your physiology on the climb, that you hold yourself back, that you don't, uh, don't give in to temptation or distraction from the scenery and push too hard because then you do pay for it later. So as is the case with all these video posts, I've gone out and filmed the route and I'm going to talk you through those specific sections now. So. This is the start of the climb, which comes just after the 29 kilometer mark of the race. At this point, you'll know whether you're having a good or a bad day, and so you can judge your effort reasonably accurately. What you don't want to do at this point, and this is really important, is get too carried away with the climb, because as I said, this is not the final climb of your race, and so you have to protect your legs as much as possible so that you're still strong for the pull-up constantia neck, which happens in about 13 kilometers. The climb that you're on now is around four and a half kilometers in length, but it goes up in two stages. What you're looking at right now is Little Chappies, which has a summit of sorts just after 30 kilometers. Then you actually descend for around 800 meters before climbing up again, this time for just under three k's before you reach the top of Chapman's Peak at around the 34 kilometer mark. The gradient here is moderate. You'll know you're working, but you should feel reasonably controlled at this point. That's 30 kilometers just gone on the left, and so you have 300 meters of climbing before you get some respite from the hill. The operative word at this point is control. If you feel great, that's good news, but you don't want to be spending that positive energy right now. Rather enjoy the great views of Nurtuk to your left and relax ahead of the main part of the climb. Just a note on pacing. You've just passed the 30k mark, but in terms of time, you're probably only at the halfway mark of your race. If you get the pacing right, then a good rule of thumb is to double your 30k time to predict your finish time, because the race is so backloaded with the two major climbs at the end. So for example, if your target is 6 hours, then 30k's and not 28k's should be around 3 hours, otherwise you may leave yourself a little bit too much to do. This is the 800 meter descent that I spoke of earlier and it's a good time to collect yourself, have a little bit of food to eat or maybe something to drink if you feel the need and start to gather yourself for the climb up ahead. Don't charge down this hill because then you'll take a little bit too much out of your legs but rather just go down at a comfortable pace and as I say collect yourself for what's up ahead. To your left as you just saw is a beautiful view of Long Beach and ahead of you where the road bends to the right as you see now just before the 31k mark, is the start of the main part of the climb. If the wind is blowing, then you'll see at this point it's about to become a tailwind which will help you up the early part of the climb. But again, at this stage, don't get too carried away. There's a long way to go yet, and just take things in a nice, controlled, comfortable manner. So I alluded earlier to the possibility that you may find yourself not feeling too great at this stage in the race. It's often deceptive and misleading because the first 30 kilometers are relatively flat and you can find yourself a good rhythm which is suddenly challenged when the road starts to head up. The other problem is that you're in no man's land that third quarter of the race and science tells us that this third quarter is often the most challenging part of the race because you're halfway done but not yet close to home. The key now is just remain composed, trust the fact that you've done the hill work, you've done the long runs and realistically there's nothing that 31 kilometers of running can throw at you that you're not ready for. So just relax, take the most incredible views to your left hand side and try to feed off the energy from the race. Remain positive through this section. If you look up, you'll see the road ahead of you winding its way towards the summit. But just stay in the moment, trust yourself and don't get ahead just yet. 
It's just a bad patch and it will pass. On the other hand, if you're feeling strong at this point, remind yourself that this is not where the race is made. The elite race often splits on this part of the climb, but it's hardly ever the decisive move and it's precisely because some of the runners get carried away here. Perhaps they're inspired by the incredible scenery, but try not to fall into the same trap as them. The road is about to get a little more challenging. As you leave this overhang and half tunnel, you'll hit the 32 kilometer mark with about two kilometers to go to the summit. This also signals the start of what is the steepest part of the climb. It does get quite steep at points here and it's very twisty and so if the wind blows it'll shift directions often. Again, composure and control are the buzzwords at this point. If you look up to your left, you'll see what looks like the summit. But don't be deceived, it's not. It's a false summit and there are about 700 meters to go from that groove in the mountain. It's important here that you don't force the pace faster. You will slow down and you'll notice it, but it is significantly steeper than the early slope so it's expected and what you force now you will pay for later. Because it's steeper here this is also a really good place to implement a walk run strategy if you feel the need. Now whether to walk or run is always debatable among runners but my recommendation here is that you'd rather choose to walk than be forced to walk. In other words walk before you have to. So if you have doubts over whether you have it in you to handle the distance and if you haven't been able to get in the volume or quality of training you wanted then you will benefit from planned walking because it allows you to settle down run a controlled race and just delay that perception of incessant effort. This is that false summit that you saw earlier on on the climb and it's from here that you can see the real summit up ahead of you around six or seven hundred meters away. This is where great support and the next aid stations are waiting to welcome you to the summit of Chapman's Peak. And speaking of aid stations you will have access to water, coke and pyrate all the way along the length of this climb so make sure you take advantage of those opportunities Drink to thirst and make sure that you replace the energy that you're using. Take one last look to your left hand side here, just appreciate the breathtaking view and then as you make this bend to the right, you will see the summit welcoming you. This is where you get to cash in on a nice long descent down into Hart Bay, an important descent and that's what we will discuss in the next part of this series of recon videos. So if it seemed to you that I was laboring the point in that video clip about slowing down, controlling the pace, relaxing, not pushing on, being calm, it's because I was. And that's because in a 56k race lasting 6-7 hours, there is really not much over the 6 or 7k's on Chapman's Peak that can make your race. But if you get it wrong and if you go too fast, then you can break your race here. And so it's really important that you're conservative. And I would say that you're better off going 5% slower on Chapman's Peak in order to go 5% faster later on. And so if you're going to make a mistake, rather err on the side of caution and slowness and cash in later on. Now that's particularly important on the descent into Hart Bay and that's why there's a video of this descent following this one. Really, really important again to just be patient, be controlled and get yourself to the marathon mark because that's the position from which you can strike, not before. So let's have a look now at the descent.